30 minutes or so. So far, so good. So we all carried on through this portion of the trail, walking into the coal of the third brother, admiring the unreal snow-covered winter wonderland all around us. The fresh snow on the limbs of all the trees weighing them down all over. Yes, it looked like Narnia. The sun was about to be up fully, so we no longer needed our headlamps, so away they went. Gotta save those batteries. It was evident the three of us weren't going to be at the summit for the sunrise, but we had a great view of it for the past 15 minutes through the trees, so it was still spectacular. We were able to enjoy the show regardless. It was at this point while the three of us were apart that I really started to feel hungry. And in the winter, you have to remember to eat and drink the same as in the summertime, but it's easy to forget to fuel up and drink since it's so cold. All of my snacks were tucked in my pack, and in order to access them, it would have meant taking it off, unclipping the snowshoes, opening the pack to get the snacks, putting the snowshoes back on, clipping them in. Ugh. I hate that the snowshoes hinder access to my pack. I clip them on under the brain of the backpack, which also makes me wider on the trail when I'm squeezing through narrow sections. So I kept walking up the trail, and at that point I had remembered, oh wait, the goo, the goo. I had a couple of Cliff Bar goos that my wife randomly got from work that I took and threw in my backpack's belt clip pouch at one point, and I'd completely forgotten about them. But then I remembered them. Yes. So I took them out and enjoyed both of them within five minutes of each other because I was so hungry and they were just delicious. Which is weird because I'm not a big fan of goos due to the texture. It just kind of weirds me out. And this flavor was also vanilla. The worst. Probably why they were free. But since they were so cold, their texture changed. And there was like caramel. And they hit the spot. Man, I was stoked to have those at that point. Just enough fuel to get me to the top of the mountain without having to take everything off to get to my real snacks. So I continued walking through the winter wonderland. And at this point, Kira was further up and Stefan was further back. I yelled to Stefan to see how far back he was, and it sounded like I was in a professional sound booth. With all the snow and the trees surrounding me all around, the sound of my yelling for him just died immediately. Would have been a great place to record a full episode of a podcast, actually. It's like a sound booth. I waited for a minute or two, and then I saw him coming in the distance, so I knew he was behind me, and I carried on. Shortly after, I came to the wooden sign stating Big Slide, 0.3 miles. And I was immediately brought back in my head to the last time I was here, when I was a mere 0.3 miles away from becoming an Adirondack 46er. What a great sign that is. So up I went, and soon I came to a super steep climb that I remember looking at before starting to climb and thinking, I remember this final push being steep, but I don't remember it being this steep. Hmm. What? Well, up I went. And down I went. And up I went. And down I went. It was pretty tough to climb up because the snow would give out upon stepping on it and there wasn't much to grab onto. So I'm trying to climb up this steep little section here. I'm not too far from the summit. I don't quite remember this section here being super steep, but uh, I'm trying to climb up, slide down, try to climb up, slide down. And it's probably about, I don't know, it's probably a good 20 feet. So need to have a, a plan here that will be successful so far i have i have been unsuccessful but here we go try to climb up there keep it steady keep it steady slipping all right we're good oh and now the wind's blowing and snow is blowing all over my face and the back of my neck perfect i just realized why this section is so steep and i don't remember it i'm currently right next to the stairs that are covered in about four feet of snow going up to the top of Big Slide. Now I remember. Yeah, definitely will be sliding down this on my butt coming back, but going up is proving to be a, a challenge as the snow blows into my face right now. I contemplated putting my snowshoes on to get a little more bite on my feet, but I opted to just go at it again. So I started climbing, digging my feet and poles in, going one slow step at a time, and I was slowly but successfully making my way up, and then I looked to the left and noticed the wooden staircase covered in snow. Oh, yes, no wonder I don't recall this, because there's usually a staircase here that you're climbing up. Man, if only that staircase wasn't covered in four feet of snow, this portion of the trail would have been a whole lot easier. But I kept plugging away, slowly stepping up one at a time, and then I made it all the way to the top, and then I heard Jonathan and Kira talking just in front of me. 
I wasn't at the summit, but I was at the lookout, maybe 0.1 miles before the summit along the slide, the big slide, where Jonathan took lots of photos. The three of us hung out there for a few minutes, taking in the scenery, and then Stefan met back up with us as he came climbing up that same very difficult steep stretch I had just very ungracefully made my way up. From here, we all grabbed a drink and then proceeded up the final portion of the trail together, which we climbed quickly, and we made it to the untouched, snow-covered summit of Big Slide Mountain at 8.35 a.m., just over three and a half hours from signing in, the 27th highest peak in the Adirondacks. As I have mentioned, this day was flawless, completely perfect. The blue sky with fresh snow on the mountains in front of us, the rising sun's light allowing for the snow to really glisten, and no wind at the summit at all. It was incredible. The summit of Big Slide sees everything from the Great Range, the McIntyre Range, Marcy, Giant, Rocky Peak Ridge, Hurricane Mountain, and so many more, along with all those super expensive camps of Keene and Keene Valley. Amazing. So we all put down our packs and enjoyed some snacks. I had a delicious buffalo chicken breast sandwich on an everything bagel that I decided I'll eat it in the car on the way home instead of up here on the five degree summit. Yes, it was five degrees at the top, so it was actually warmer right now on the summit than it was when we started at the base of the peak. So instead I inhaled a bag of peanut butter M&Ms and a Snickers bar, along with three quarters of a Nalgene of noon water, tropical flavor today, Man, he's really hit the spot. You don't really notice how hungry you are until you eat one thing and then just it opens the floodgates of hunger. We stayed up on the summit for probably around half an hour. Kira had to work today. John and Stefan were planning to hit up the Noonmark Diner when we got back. And I had to get home to take an afternoon nap on the couch. So we decided it was time to start heading back down the mountain. Of course, that nap on the couch would never come, as usually happens when you have small kids at home. So we started our descent and cruised down the mountain. I could tell while we were climbing up that it was going to be a fast one today going down because the trail was perfect for it. We did a good amount of butt sliding down that top section, the steeper section, especially down that really steep portion along the stairs. That was fun. It's always fun when the conditions allow for that sort of thing. Heading down, we passed a few hikers coming up for the day as John and I broke off slightly ahead of Kira and Stefan until we met back up on the top of the second brother. But John and I passed and talked with a man who, in my opinion, seemed like a local hiker who has been hiking these mountains longer than I've been alive. That's just the vibe that I got from him. And I noticed he had spikes on, not snowshoes, and that he had snowshoes attached to the side of his pack. So I asked him about his pack, and he had clips to clip them to the side because, he said, I hate not being able to access my pack because the snowshoes are in the way. So I bought this one, which is a conversation Jonathan and I were just having before we met up with him. So that was funny. After that, he said to me, I only wear snowshoes when it's a must. You need to remember when it comes to the snow and imprints, one pound on your foot is equal to five pounds on your back. So a pair of snowshoes on the snow will do the same as if you have 10 more pounds in your backpack. I thought that was pretty insightful, so I wanted to share it with all of you. But then we said our goodbyes and we carried on down the trail. John and I stopped to take in the scenery and admire all the camps of Keene Valley that can be seen from the brothers. Some people have views like we had at that moment, except they have them from their front door. Just unreal. Then Kira and Stefan caught up and came out of the woods, and we all hiked down the mountain back to the trailhead together. We made it to the garden parking lot just after 11.15 a.m., signed out and went our separate ways. A fun hike with a group of people, and some I had never met. A textbook winter day on Big Slide Mountain. It will be hard to beat today's picturesque winter adventure. Well, another successful winter day in the woods here on Big Slide Mountain, the 27th highest high peak in the Adirondacks. Sub-zero temperatures to start the day, frozen thumbs, clear sunny skies on the summit, and a picture-perfect winter sunrise. An awesome day on the trail. Thanks to John, Kira, and Stefan for sharing the adventure with me. And thanks to you all for listening, and be sure to follow the 46 of 46 podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Leave a rating or review wherever you listen. And be sure to stay tuned for new mountains, new stories, and new episodes. Let's mix it up here. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock walk, and if you carry it in, carry it out. Everything. Every time. Banana peels and all. See you on the trails.